Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I'm going to be starting the Terraspol campaign on the Axis side. I will be playing the Burning Baltics campaign soon, <laughs> don't you worry guys. Uh, I know some of you guys have been waiting patiently for a new campaign but hopefully all the content in the meantime has been fun to watch. Either way, let's get into this. So, Tiraspol, August 21st to 29th, 1944. In an almost exact rerun of the Stalingrad campaign, the Soviets are striking the Romanian forces guarding both flanks of the German 6th Army. Having established a bridgehead across the Nister in the spring, Stavka intends to use it as a springboard to punch through the Axis front, then unleash mechanized forces in the gap to link up with the third Ukrainian front coming from Yash in the west. I believe the description on the right here is the same as the Yash campaign, so feel free to pause that and have a look if you haven't seen the start of the Yash campaign. But the forces are a little bit different here. We have the 37th Army, the 57th Army, the 46th Army, and parts of the 5th Shock Army for the Soviets. And the Axis side, which is the side we're going to be playing on for this one, is the 3rd Romanian Army and the 6th German Army under General Dumitrescu, which hopefully I'm pronouncing relatively okay. But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we go. Let's switch over to the Romanian side, where of course puts the Soviet commander over to hard AI, which is the hardest we can do in the campaign. And we'll jump on in. In the middle of August 1944, with heavy fighting raging across the Eastern Front and the Red Army in Poland drawing more and more German reinforcements into combat, the next strike was being planned by Stopka. The target? Romania. Taking advantage of the urgent redeployment of most German armored units from the southern flank to reinforce hard-pressed defenses around the Polish capital, the Soviets massed huge forces in front of the weakened German and Romanian troops guarding the frontier. Stalin's objective is to knock Romania out of the war with one devastating blow. On August 20th, the 2nd and 3rd Ukrainian fronts launch a simultaneous attack in the Jesse and Tiraspol sectors. Striking hard at the sectors held by the Romanians, the Soviets aim to envelop the reconstituted German 6th Army, rebuilt after its destruction at Stalingrad. These unfortunate German soldiers now find themselves trapped in an encirclement eerily similar to their infamous defeat two years earlier. We are receiving increasingly bleaker reports about an imminent Soviet offensive into our homeland. The bridgehead established by the Soviet 37th Army over the Dniester River poses the principal threat in our sector. It is either the starting point of the assault from which the Soviets will surge out, or as the anvil against which to trap the 39th Corps if they try to break through across the river on each side of the bridgehead. Our military analysts consider Taryutin and Kumrat in our rear to be the most probable objectives. Unfortunately, the Germans are discarding our warnings. Prepare to fight, Commander. Your country depends on you. All right, so here we are. And we're already thrown into the battle as we have the 2nd Battalion of the... 11th Infantry Regiment under attack. This is a Romanian force. So we've got Infanterist on our side this time around. So we'll try and make good use out of the Infanterist and the Roma Romanian units throughout this campaign. I can't really reinforce this too well. I might bring in the 2nd Battalion of the 30th Artillery uh, just to back us up in this one. And... Let's see what aircraft we have. Don't think we have that many. We've got four units here. There's the 32nd Recon Group, which is only Focke-Wulf 189s, uh, which are apparently light bombers, but I don't see any bombs there. Then there's the Close Support Group, which is HS-129s with 30mm cannons. Uh, there are some with bombs, some with cluster AP, and some recon JU-88s. 
And then the fifth fighter group, we have the IARs and some ME109E7s. And then the third recon group is Blenheims. So recon Blenheims. Interesting. Okay, so this might be a quite hard-pressed battle. I think I might bring in the 1st Battalion of the 24th Infantry Regiment to back this up. Uh, let's tactical battle, and we'll jump on in. So thankfully, uh, the AI didn't bring in any aircraft of their own. And this will be a ground-based battle. It's quite nice. But one thing that's going to be really interesting is defences. So with the rangery work, MG42 bunkers now only have 1,200 meter range. The Pac-37 bunkers now only have 1,000 meter range. And the Pac-50 bunkers have only 1,500. And the 75 mils now have 1,750. So transport sniping is actually not as much of a legitimate strategy as it was in past campaigns. Uh, we will probably still try and stop transports on the road by putting the AT guns facing down the roads. Uh, but yeah, ultimately it's going to change some of the battles quite significantly in the breakthrough game mode, which will be interesting to find out as we go along through this campaign. Either way, I'm going to take a few minutes, well, probably more than a few minutes, to get down my defenses and I'll be back with you guys in just a second. All right, my defenses are all set up. Let's quickly go through them. We've got a bunch of Infanterist here with some Kalarashi. And uh, I've also got a leader there. Do have a commander back here, which is hopefully going to help all of these get two star veterancy from this leader. Got a few bunkers hanging about. We've got Pack 50 that's covering the ridge with an MG42 closer up. Pack 37 that's kind of covering the road further back. It's more like a second line of defense here. Got some ZBs with the Lunatist. Uh, this is a double line of barbed wire going all the way across the open ground. Just stop them pushing across here, although the reinforcement points. As you can see, there's only four of them coming on these roads, so I don't expect too much to be coming in here. If it does, I should have plenty of time to react. I might actually just add a couple of trenches uh, back here just to make sure we have some defensive positions. Uh, then I have some Kalalashe with the Infanterie. Actually, these are the uh, infantry um, leaders, and we've got the Artilleria as well with the... Pack 75 and the MG42 and the Pack 37, more Kalarashe, Infantry, Infanterist, and uh, the Kalarashe. I've got a lot of these Kalarashe. So, one thing that was like really annoying when I was playing against the Romanian forces was the fact that the AI loved to spam Kalarashe. So, you know what? We're turning the tables in this campaign. I'm going to use Kalarashe any opportunity I get to dick on the AI. <laughs> there's loads of battle uh, on the right hand side here just uh, use the buildings mostly uh, there is some trenches, this one's got a lunatist in it I do need to select all my leaders uh, let's just quickly do that I'm going to put them all on return fire so they don't reveal their locations and get absolutely annihilated by artillery fire speaking of artillery, I do have a few artillery pieces at the back uh, ready for counter battery and we are getting a few transport snipes which is good uh, the Pack 75, like I made sure that these bunkers did get veterancy, so they could actually be uh, useful. Up here, we're kind of out of range, unfortunately, of the commander. Only just. I, I might bring in like another leader in between at some point, so that we can extend that. These ones don't have uh, commanders either. I think I might have one more commander, maybe. Yeah, I do have one more commander, so I could just bring that in as well. Oh, here we go. Let's get the artillery onto group one. And then we need to target any mortars we see, because they are starting to mortar my back 50 here. We can see the advance of the Kanaya and the Sapoli and the Kavadia. Ooh, big artillery coming in. Big artillery coming in. That might not be good, because I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to deal with big artillery like that very well. I'm going to just keep bringing in more artillery. If we lose the artillery fight, it doesn't matter that much. But I should probably just start trying to get on top of it now rather than later. Also got the ZB here, as you can see. It's firing away. I should also kind of spread out these shots. 
so that we can cover multiple at once. And that way we pin them down and it stops them counter battering as much. So I'm just going to keep the artillery fire coming down there. We get these to spread out. And when they do get to their locations, we'll make sure they unload. The Kaleleshe, they are going to get pinned down here, unfortunately. Looks like they are trying to push across the open with the OB, which is a bit of a pain. Not too much I can do about the OB. And the Kalarashe here, you can see, are getting wrecked. Probably have to back off if we can. They might die in the process. It's because the artillery, I think, already did a number on those. But this one's ready to go. I'm actually going to target that OB just to see if we can get it pinned down. We'll hit that 152 back there. Oh nice, we're getting some shots on these guys. That's great. I might have to bring in like a couple more MGs or something further back. But we should be able to see them as they come across the open here. Their artillery is uh, going to be a lot better than ours, just in general. Do you need to get on top of it very quickly. Let's go ahead and bring in one of these. Uh, another one of these. We're going to want to bring in the 122s as well. They do have radios, so technically we could think about doing something with that. So far, so good. 12 minutes left. We're going to have those go for the OB. One can go for this OB again. I've also got the MG bunker on the side of the hill here. Firing away. Really got to keep an eye out for those big guns. I feel like we might have killed these two. I could put these onto counter battery orders so they automatically counter battery. Like they're all going to fire on the 152 on the left there, so we'll just go ahead and do that ourselves anyway. Uh, and I'll just bring in these anyway as well, the 122s, because if we can maintain an artillery advantage, then uh, we should be able to crack down on it. Oh, I lost a Lunatist. Oh, the one on the right-hand side here. Infantry is firing away. They're going to get hit by a lot of snipers there. Let's just get them into the trench. I'm going to put these on return fire. Getting some... MGs in here, I think is a good idea. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll have this one focus on the 152 that just got brought in. Still killing quite a lot of transports on this road. <laughs> Crikey. That bunker's just annihilating them. Wow. crazy loads of kills the thing is as they start to build up on the road here you can see they start it starts to get wider and wider because they keep having to come further and further out to get past the other x and it just turns into this big old fireball Where's that artillery at? One all the way over on the left there. Okay, that's good. 
of the Zebbies. I think I might just unload them as they are and then just uh, attack me forwards. I'll maybe get a couple into the buildings on the left. Potentially. Oh, the Infanterist already died. That's kind of crazy. I guess the Gavardia DP, they're actually going to do quite a lot of damage. In the current build of the game, squads with two MGs are much better than squads with only one MG, but that artillery fire is certainly not helping. Could also be the cause. Oh, these only have 1,000 meter range. They actually, that actually matches the snipers. I thought they had the same range as MG42s, but that would have been pretty real work. So this, these aren't actually very good in this situation. I should probably move them back. I am going to want to manually target mortars. I think there was one on the road here. This would also hit reinforcing troops anyway, so kind of worth doing. That Kalarashi. Oh, not in a good spot there next to the AT gun. Have these fall back. I might want to move this commander back as well, because if a la if a shot lands on this pack 37. <sighs> Ooh, if I hadn't have moved that, I would have been dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, sixth sense coming in handy there. Blimey. Oh, my bunker went down. That's not good. Let's move the Kalarashe forwards. We'll get the uh, Infanterist into the trench here as well. Alright, and we're going to invest in a few more infantry squads. Let's get some more Kalalashe, Linatist. I will bring in some ZBs. Brilliant. I might just move this back. Well, I lost the unit of Kalalashe. I'm not going to want to lose uh, too many units of this Kalalashe because they are actually pretty useful. I think that's primarily artillery that's causing that at the moment. And that 152 is firing at close range. We're going to need some supply. Let's start bringing that in. Into phase B. if we can hit those in those avtos as they come forwards pick them out boys there you go what we like to see this is a tough burst fight oh one of my artillery pieces just got uh counter battery put my own dudes onto counter battery as well this one's being hit I'm going to have to start spotting them again manually because I feel like we're not hitting them as efficiently as we could be because we're kind of crutching on the counter battery tool. Counter the counter battery command doesn't really spread shots very well. It kind of tells all of your units to fire at the same place, which is obviously not too ideal. Ooh, so close every time. Let's keep moving that back a little bit. Don't want to lose my commander. Okay, we can bring in more, like, infantry -ish. So Let's go ahead and do that. Get some more bodies on the field. Okay, 
going to have to use some of these supply trucks as well. Oh wow, the commander actually got killed. Um, they can't have even been firing at the bunker if it went that far. And maybe it got spotted at some point, I'm not sure. There is like the two snipers there. That's kind of unlucky, losing the commander there. It's okay, it's not the end of the world, it's just kind of a bit rough for any future battles with this division. Or like with the particular like battalion that, got, that lost its commander, it's going to be pretty rough. From now on. For those infantry ished, kind of getting slapped a little bit there. Yeah, that's not good. That Avto might just kill them all. We don't have the two star veterancy there anymore, so it's like it's really, really rough. Yeah, this right side just been demolished. Or left side, sorry. <laughs> that sucks. Alright, we managed to get rid of that Avte, so that's good. We get the infantry into the cover there. The AI is relentless with their Avtos. Let's get these into the trenches here. Alright. Make sure that we take out these artillery pieces when we see them. Eight minutes left on the clock. Just looking at the Hutchkiss trucks there to see if they have the range. They really don't. Uh, we could use these, potentially, to cover the open. Well, there goes one of my... Artillery pieces will move the supply away. Let's see if we can get into this unit, this uh, building next to the Gavardia. And the Avtos there are going to deal a lot of damage, but probably take a lot of damage as well because they aren't in cover. Right side seems okay because of the MG42 bunker, but the MG42 bunker on the left died, so that's what's caused the issue so far. We'll have to get more infantry here just to kind of hold the line. I am tempted to maybe bring in some mortars here. Not sure how useful they'll be, but we'll give it a go. Okay, the idea of these is that I can direct fire, but I'm not sure what the range is on the direct fire. It might just be 1,500, which isn't terrible. I mean, it's still relatively good. Oh, there goes another artillery piece. Okay. Not too bad. Oh, that one unloading there kind of sucks. Oh, and there goes the 100. <laughs> We're slowly but surely losing 
our artillery. The 152 mils are actually surprisingly accurate at range. Right side still looks fine. Left side is the biggest problem. But as long as we hold on to this flag, we should be okay. I'm going to set up a second defensive line here. In the trees, because we're not going to be able to hold further up. As long as I get a major victory, that's all I really want. Bunch of units there. With any luck, we can do some serious damage to these 152s, but... Not so far. I lost eyes on that one, Just I was going to try and mortar it, but I guess... I'll be a little bit too far away to do that. Before we get some recon in here. Uh, do I have any recon left? I have most of it on the ground already. Alright, well the ZBs are actually doing pretty well. We could move these back, let's just give them the full back commands. We'll move this one back as well because of its being counter-batteried. Uh, there's the one on this side that needs to go as well. Let's keep shooting this one as well, please. Thank you. Okay, I'm very lucky. These artillery pieces are doing their best. They're actually pretty good in this situation, I think. Because they do have pretty good damage. My Kavashi aren't even using the trench properly. Get in there, boys. Well, this one's leaking a little bit. A little bit of water in the bottom of the trench. <laughs> That's not very fun. Better get them some dry boots after this battle. They're going for the mortars. These two machine guns right here have been pretty, in, like, just invaluable on this left side. After the initial, like, breakthrough here, They've managed to hold back a lot of this uh, infantry that's pushed out. We're into phase C. Doesn't make too much of a difference, but I really want to crack down on these ML20s. We'll just get them all to fire at the same one. Maybe that is the best bet. Oh, I do want to take out this one though. Let's let's hit that OB. Killing OBs is really nice because there's quite a limited amount of them available in the Soviet units, like in the Soviet battalions. So once you kill all of them, you don't have to deal with them again in a subsequent battle with the same battalion, which is pretty useful. I can't believe this is still alive. It's ridiculous. Yeah, the town side looks all all well and good, honestly. Right side's look actually not looking too bad because these guns are in position and they're firing away. Actually doing quite a bit of damage. Like I just lost a supply vehicle. I guess Supply vehicles are something that's in quite short supply in campaigns in general. Losing those kinds of sucks, but the 100 mil still alive in that one for now. Really hoping that we can maybe kill these. Oh, we will. There's 45 seconds left now. Sergeant 
All the machine guns firing away here. Is Gavardia not having a fun time? Another 122. Now this artillery unit of mine is going to have taken some serious losses. Okay. That's going to be the major victory. And we don't lose this flag. Yep. All good. I'll take a major victory. 22 minutes, 38 seconds, 35 kills for them, 204 losses. Yeah, one of these bunkers did a lot of damage. One up on the ridge by the town. It looks like the 75 killed a lot of stuff as well. Wow, that's, uh, that's a lot of kills. Uh, the MD42 bunker there got quite a few kills. Uh, that Kaladash here, look at that. BTRS, 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 BTRS. How many PTRS squads? That's crazy. All right, well, I'll take it. That was pretty good. One thing I didn't really see was how many artillery pieces we got. We actually lost. So we lost two OBs and two 122s in the end. They lost eight ML20s. That's actually really good. We did a lot of damage there. They they lost thirty five Avto squads. 27 Gavardi DP. I think that's pretty much all of the Gavardi DP of like one battalion. Um, Gavardia, Maxims, they lost so much stuff. Wow. The really nice thing about playing the Romanians though is because we have Kadalashi as our snipers, their snipers aren't that effective because we only have to kill two men whilst they have to kill 10 in like the Kadalashi squads. So yeah, we will kill a lot of snipers throughout this campaign. The AI loves to use them. But that's a good start, anyway. And we're under attack again. This time, the 1st Battalion of the 106th. So over to the German side of things now. This is the uh, the German 15th Infantry Division. Okay. So this time around, we have MG42s, which are really nice. Much better than the ZBs. I'll probably bring in the Fusilier Battalion, I think, to back this up. Although, saying that, I'm not sure I can. We could bring in the Morses. They're going to have a lot on the ground, though. And this is the SFH-150s. Bring in a phase B fusilier battalion. Like the way that this front line's laid out, that moment is kind of rough. Because the trouble is if I over over reinforce this and then this unit gets attacked, I could get hit by three as well. And then I'll want to use the 257th to back that up. I could pull these guys across, but if you look at this battle. It takes away the dug-in status of the unit next to them. So if you use a dug-in unit to reinforce, it will take away the dug-in status, and that's not ideal. So, yeah, I'm not sure how I want to go about this. I mean, maybe I could reinforce this one with aircraft if needs be, and for now we'll just move the fusiliers in to back up the 1st Battalion of the 106th. I think that's fine. We do have an IG-33 there, that's cool. Uh, what are we potentially up against? I should probably just quickly check these, just in case there's anything different, because I've never played the Tiraspol campaign on the Allied side, and in most campaigns previously, I've played the Allied side campaign first. I think this Tiraspol campaign is the first time that I've played the Axis side first, so I'm going to need to check uh, what's available in these. Uh, before we jump in, just in case there's like any surprise tanks or stuff like that that I might not be ready to deal with. But for the most part, I think this looks okay. It's quite likely that they're going to bring in some artillery themselves. Hopefully one my 150s will do the trick. Uh, what I might do is leave the Morses until we have an artillery advantage, because then the Morses can be much more effective than having to use them for counter-battery. Uh, let's tactical battle, and we will jump on in.
Yeah, so it looks like two infantry divisions or infantry battalions and a artillery unit. And we're on cell. Two rifle regiment battalions and the light artillery brigade. Right. Well, this map is in some ways easier to defend because it's quite condensed and our infantry I think is probably better uh, I was going to say at close range but not really, not with grenadiers yeah I'm not sure how this is going to go honestly we will see, these grenadiers aren't that fantastic and we really don't have that many units uh, but we do have plenty of bunkers, so I'm going to get them down, and I'll be back with you guys in just a second. Alright, my defences are set up. So, on the left side here, we have the Pack 50 that's kind of covering the open ground here, but also has shots across onto this road in case they start to break down here, which they might do with the Pack 37 bunker. That Pack 37 might go down. That is covering, but it's only 1,000 meter range up that road. Fusiliers, Grenadiers, Ballyfura, MG42. That MG42 does have line of sight up the road and also across. This is pretty important because they start to like pile across this bridge sometimes. And uh, that is a good way to start shooting them at close range there. Bunch of Grenadiers, Fusiliers in here with some trenches. I got some more trenches here with Fusiliers, Grenadiers. Got an MG42 bunker covering uh, this area. Whilst we've got a Pack 75 that's going to try and get some snipes onto this bridge. Might just end up getting killed, but we'll see. Uh, pack 37 closer up as uh, stuff comes down the road should be able to hit it uh, we've got some trenches further back for the fusiliers and the grenadiers uh, going to feel here which is giving the veteran seat to the bunkers and the grenadiers got some more grenadiers in here these i'll probably have to back up with more infantry uh, but we've got plenty of time to do that i'm sure and uh, then we've got fusiliers here these actually do need a trench and i think i have some trenches left over here I've got some barbed wire on the right hand side, some barbed wire on the left hand side. I'm not sure if I really need any anywhere else. We could maybe put some in the front here next to the Pack 37 and maybe even some up here in front of these grenadiers and stuff. But yeah, not too bad. Could use the gun pits for something like the IG. I do have an IG all the way back here, the IG 33. It's going to be uh, hiding and popping things down that road. But let's go ahead and launch, see what happens. We'll back things up where we need to. Need my grenadiers forwards. They're all three-star vet with the uh, the Grenfjord nearby, which is really nice. Uh, but, like the veterancy from these commandants at the backside is helping out quite a lot. I've also got the bike here as well. I uh, could probably do with some veterancy on these grenadiers. So I might use the Fusilier battalion to bring in the Fusilier Fjordos. See where we can go from there. I should actually bring in some uh, recon up here on the ridge. Uh, actually let's just move the Fusilier unit over so we can see what we're shooting at. I was going to say I thought I had recon. That's probably going to be an OB. Let's go ahead and select these. Uh, that probably will get killed by the MG bunker anyway. Uh, let's go for this one that one doesn't have an MG shooting it. Getting rid of the OBs is uh, pretty important. For sure. I think the artillery unit they have, the light artillery brigade, usually for Soviets that means something like F-22s. So might not have to worry about counter battery too much. Might be able to get some decent use out of the 150 mils, but I will definitely target any artillery we see regardless. This is probably dead. I'm going to leave my mouse hovering over where the mortar is firing from so that we can see if that dies. Yeah, it's gone. There we go. I only took one shot from every gun. Second shot's coming in regardless. Might hit some sort of transport coming down the road. I have a Fusilier here, but I'm not sure that's really spotting too much. It does have line of sight according to the line of sight tool. Now these 150s we're using this time around are a lot stronger 
than the artillery we had before. The 100 mil Romanian artillery doesn't really have the same sort of blast that the 150s do, but these can really do a lot of damage. They're really good guns. We're out of range of that OB as well. We'll let the artillery rain down onto the mortars for now. Oh, that was a direct hit, so we'll go straight over to the OB. And then it looks like we're going to have to work on... Oh, that's actually... They're actually A19s. Okay. Uh, that's some big artillery. Some big boy artillery. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in our bigger guns then. Get all of my artillery on the field. And we'll try and overwhelm their artillery. Because that's going to be pretty important. If there's A19s... Yeah, that's going to make quite a big difference. We've got to make sure we get rid of those. Because those A19s can be quite accurate. They aren't quite as strong as the ML20s because their calibre is a lot lower. But because they are quite accurate, it's definitely worth us taking them out. They can definitely count a battery pretty well. Oh, please, direct hit. Oh, close. A couple more shots onto that, and then maybe we can move over to the A19 immediately. I'm going to tell them to start shooting at it now. Because as long as the OB isn't firing at us, it should be fine. I'm going to have to remember this. I'm actually going to ping this area so we know where they are. So that when my new artillery gets into position, we can just fire immediately. The snipers are currently pinning down my bunkers here. Don't have too much I can do about that. We have a couple of IGs further back. I don't think that's going to make too much of a difference. MD-34s are firing away. I think all of the ones that are just unloading here, I'm going to get to target the mortars. And we'll just demolish them. Quite a thin map again, so... Got plenty of... Oh, got plenty of artillery here, basically. Um, there's not going to be many places that the AI puts them, because they can only deploy artillery in this section and in this section. So they're probably all going to be in roughly the same place. Just got to hope that my SFH 150mm uh, want to be accurate today, which uh, so far they have not been. That might have done some damage. I don't know if it would have killed it, though. Big old shots coming down. It looks like smoke. But they, like, popped smoke. Yeah, they're popping smoke. Interesting. I might bring in a little squad. Okay, first of all, what I'm going to do is this. And then, what we're going to do is, I'm going to grab these and we're going to target this artillery piece. Um, and then I'm going to bring in a squad of fusiliers. And we're going to push these fusiliers through here to take care of the snipers. The plan. And both these MGs able to shoot on these Thraki, so they're going to be pinned down pretty quick. So far, so good. 
Nine minutes left on the clock. I'd like another major victory. That would be nice. I could bring in more MG42s. We actually had quite a lot with the Fusilier Battalion. They could be very useful at taking out these snipers. I might bring in a few of them. Just bring in all four of those and then we'll kind of place them in the heavy cover. We'll try the Fizzlers first though. We'll have these unload and run through here on the left. Get these uh, Fizzler Fjellers unloaded. Get some extra veterancy on that MG42 bunker. It's actually going to make a world of difference. I'll sit in this left house. Mm, it's not going to give veterancy to the Grenadiers. Right, we'll just sit on the corner then. Right, who is next? There is another mortar right there that will also help us hit the spawn a little bit. I'll go for it. Get these unloaded and we'll push forwards. These are all three star veterans here. I could in fact move forwards a leader with them. But I don't want to lose my leader. I mean, we could use the Ballyfjörder. The Ballyfjörder should be alright. I mean, I'll bring in a Fusilifjörder to replace it. These are getting low on ammo, actually. I could bring in ammo. Keep them tops up. Allowing them to just keep spraying their machine gun and keep the Straki at bay is pretty important. Alright, that's going to be the Fusilier order there. Right, let's just get into cover here. Now, one of my Grenadiers died. Oh, the one by the, uh, the pack 75. Fair enough. Where are those firing from? There we go. Take those out, please. We'll get everything to fire at those. Just obliterate them. Three star foods, the layers just cleaning them out. Nice thing about this is they don't push the front line. This would be really interesting in like an army general scenario, I think. Like a versus army general, I mean. I'm playing against like another player. You have a battle like this where you have a recon de uh, battalion. Could probably do some serious work by sneaking through large amounts of recon infantry like this. I already killed the A19 that I was trying to RT. There was another one there as well. In this case, I do have the Battlefielder following, so that is actually pushing the front line there. Alright, let's get the MGs up here into position. I think we're going to RT this group of Straki. Uh, let's go ahead and retreat these maybe a little bit. Have that one fall back. That one might as well fall back as well. But they're trying to counter battery. Uh, let's try and take out the mortar. We'll hit the A A19 further back first. 
Ooh, Zaleer died. Oh, I think they're starting to get the better of us. The A19's having that direct fire. It is really not good. This artillery might prove to be quite effective, though. Right, these are all topped up with MG ammunition. Fire away, boys. Keep these moving up. Let's unload these. Get them into the trench. Now they can just pretty much fire forever. It would be nice to get this MG42 bunker back online. That's going to require me to take care of those uh, snipers. I can probably put a couple of these on there and stop that. Looking for guns that don't have orders. The nice thing about the bunkers absorbing fire like this though is that they kind of bunch up and they also kind of just stop in open areas so we're able to take advantage of that for sure. Alright, we'll target the 82mm mortar there and start targeting the F-22. I'm also going to want to target whatever this is. Something deployed there again. Oh, there's actually two guns there. Well, they're now pushing with the Aptos. You can tell when you've done a lot of damage because they start using the Aptos instead of the Stravalki. It's kind of like exactly how I would do it. I was like, um, I was playing this myself on the Soviet side. I'd use all of the Stralki probably before using the Aptos. There's an artillery piece back there we've got to take care of. Anything that comes up this ridge can have a bad time. Yeah. <laughs> and that after is good. Disappeared. Start bringing in some supply. Some of these are getting low. There's some more artillery on that road, so we'll go ahead and arty that. These have any supply trucks? They don't. We only have four supply trucks with our artillery. So we'll have to use the artillery, or sorry, the supply from our main. I'm surprised these haven't died, because I've just had them kind of sitting in the open, but we'll get them back into cover. These Grenadiers are held nicely. This one's not really done too well. I'm going to move it next to the others so that it maintains our 3 sub inerrancy. And it looks like we're going to have to invest in more Grenadiers here. I'm actually just going to bring in some Fusiliers as well. Maybe we can get them into this town. RT that area, or we'll RT that. Gonna RT those. They're going for the surrender. Take out the sniper. Be good. Seven minutes left. Just under seven minutes. I think the time has gone up because they managed to get the 19. If it was 20 flags still, we probably wouldn't have to wait as long. 
I can't really try and push back without losing a lot, so. Probably best if we just wait the extra time. It also allows us to destroy more of their units, so can't really complain. Keep the artillery coming down. I'm going to just keep spreading it out towards the paths of the incoming infantry. I'm also going to make sure I'm focusing these snipers just to make sure they get wiped out as well. Get rid of any maxims, any machine guns whatsoever need to go. Yeah, we've done a ton of damage here. We'll have a couple of these unload further up. But the rest can stay in the town for sure. Lost the fusilier on the on the ridge there. It's not good. These grenadiers are gonna have tons of kills. Oh, let's hit that OB. That can go. Any others not firing? Oh, that's a A19. I'll get that immediately, please. I think my fusiliers are like one by one being taken out here by like an Avto squad. Yeah, that's what that's what's happening. <laughs> let's just back off. We'll try and get these fizzlers in the Barrefjera to safety. Good hit there. Hopefully we can get another one. We can just kill those two Maxim squads. We'll target this over there. Start moving these around a little bit so that we can share the supply. I could bring in more, but not much point. Choose up what we have. And if I still need more, then I'll bring it in. I don't want to risk it being RT'd. We lost quite a lot of like supply and artillery last time, kind of unnecessarily. Or maybe not the artillery. Can't really avoid counter battery at the end of the day. Is IG going to get a good shot on? IGs are really good in the current build because they maintained the 2000 meter range after the range rework. It's pretty big. Ooh, the Kanaya. They got up there and absolutely annihilated those guys, but we now have the Fusiliers and Grenadiers in their face. That's going to do the trick there. They're pushing hard. If I lose this flag, I'm kind of screwed. Uh, let's bring in the last of the Fusiliers. I really don't have that much left. A couple Pioneers there. These are getting low on ammo already up here. These guys are out of ammo. Yeah, I think ammo is going to be a problem. Okay, uh, let's bring in... I just have to bring in some of these guns just to act as direct fire infantry guns. Three minutes. This is close. This is actually really close. Uh, let's select all my artillery. And we're going to do some crazy artillery. Just to help out the front. Because we need to seriously start cutting down on some of these units. We're running out of ammo, so <laughs> it's not ideal. Like I could bring in more, a couple of blitz to the front, but yeah, it's rough. Get some car 98s on 
target there. I'll move the Fusiliers forwards as well. Benfield is going to have to fight. Uh, I don't know if I really want to move those Grenadiers, but the Avtos are getting up the hill. Which isn't good. These MG42s even are running out of ammo. That's crazy. Alright, artillery is landing well there. That's good. Let's move this up now. Okay, let's uh, give new orders. I'll probably keep hitting that. We'll hit that. We'll hit that. We'll keep hitting this. Hit that. Hit that. Oops. Hit that. That. And we'll hit that. And that. What else could we hit? We'll probably need more artillery here. Right, the artillery is really saving us now. I think we did kill probably most of the... Most of the A19s, which is why we're not really being counter-batteried much. Because I don't think the F-22s, when they're placed at the back, or sis 3s or whatever they are, uh, can fire all the way to my spawn where my artillery is. I just don't have the range for it. But these guys have done fantastic, these grenadiers. That's been insane. Yeah, that's just threes they're using as artillery. They really don't get much ammo though. They must be getting low on supply for them. Alright, that looks like it's it. Four seconds left. Alrighty, what a battle that was. Major victory, 25 minutes. 17 kills for them. 247 losses. That was certainly a lot better than the first one. We warmed up a little bit and uh, got the job done there. That was brilliant. Okay. Yeah, the A19's going down. We needed to make sure that happened. Any super standout units. The IG-33 was actually picking up a few kills. I kind of missed most of those though. Uh, MG-42s. Looks like for the most part the kills are relatively spread out. There wasn't any super standout units like some of the bunkers in the previous battle. There we go. That is the second battle won. I bet you there's going to be some more isn't there? It would have been nice actually to have a look at the numbers. Those are going to be disorganized. Yep, here comes another attack onto the 1st Battalion of the 466th. But unfortunately, guys, it has been my time. So I'm going to leave it here. In the next episode, we will continue the defense against the Soviet forces. We've already done quite a bit of damage here, actually, especially up here, for example. Uh, we could probably counterattack that and try and get in behind some of these Soviet forces that have made the crossing over here. We do also have to worry about these lot as well. We've got a amphibious attack coming across to Ackerman. It's going to be an interesting one. But that is it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.